Good evening and welcome to another edition of FAMU TV News 20. I'm Brea Baker. And I'm Taylor Bishop. North Florida experienced a historic black bear hunt over the weekend. Live in the studio, we have Brianna Harmon with more. Brianna? Brea, Florida's first bear hunt in more than 20 years is ending early. Protesters rallied when hunters looked through the Florida woods and legally killed 293 of the 320 black bears allowed. The state's objective was 320 bears, but officials did not want to risk going over the quota by allowing another day of hunting. 81 bears were killed this Saturday in the East Panhandle BMU, which includes Wakulla, Jefferson, and Leon counties. The Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission posted a statement saying the 2015 bear hunt is officially over. This is Brianna Harmon, live in the studio. Now back to you guys at the desk. If you see smoke coming from smoke, I mean from sewers this week in Tallahassee, no need to panic. This is part of routine work being conducted by the city's underground utilities department. This type of work will be conducted throughout certain parts of the city. This type of testing will help identify leaks and defects in the sewer systems. The safe, odorless smoke leaves no residuals or stains and has no adverse effect on people, plants, or animals. Residents and business staff do not need to be at home or at their properties during the testing, which usually takes about 15 minutes. For more information, call 891-4-U. A new bill is being put into place that can help missing persons with special needs. Multimedia journalist Travis Milton has the story. The Florida Senate has been busy at work as they've delegated over legislation as session has begun. Amongst many bills, Senate Bill 203, authored by Senator Charles Dean of District 5, was favored in the Children, Families, and Elder Affairs Committee meeting. Dean's bill calls for a protocol and safety procedure on the search and rescue of missing persons with special needs. The bill will also provide for administration of the project along with required reports. All of my first responders, all of the folks that said safety, particularly our police officers, as well as our counselors and people that, that are in the program here, to be able to help and maintain and document what is the most effective way to, to protect these children. Michael Daniels of the Florida Alliance for Assistive Services and Technology is in support of Senator Dean's bill and feels that it is very important to the state of Florida. It creates a pilot program in four counties in which people can voluntarily uh, enroll in and if a person gets out of an area, then this system will actually kick on, will alert the sheriffs, and they'll be able to tell where, this, where these individuals are. Senate Bill 203 still has to be approved within the Children, Families, and Elder Affairs Committee, but senators on the committee are sure enough in favor of the bill. With Senate Bill 203 being put into action, the rescue and recovery for missing persons with special needs can be as simple as a press of a button. For News 20 at 5, I'm Travis Milton. For more information on Senate Bill 203, visit flsenate.gov. One man is dead and another behind bars following a fatal crash in Gaston County. 34-year-old Travis Jacobs was driving on US 90 near Lanier Road when he veered into the median, causing the car to flip. Officials say Jacob was not wearing a seatbelt and was thrown from the vehicle. Several lanes were blocked off following the accident while officers were investigating a vehicle entered the roadblock and almost hit troopers. The driver of that vehicle, Miguel Hurtado, was arrested for driving under the influence. He was taken to Gaston County Jail and has since bonded out. The Florida Highway Patrol and Centers for Disease Control are encouraging parents to help make scenes safer drivers. The CDC says more than 2,000 teens are killed each year in driving accidents. Driver inexperience is the leading cause for teen driving deaths. The FHP says teenage drivers are more likely to be distracted by their cell phones and not wear their seat belts. Parents should encourage their teens to practice safe driving habits and wear their seat belts. And the Senate proposed Bill 7018 was voted on Thursday during last week's Child Welfare Special Committee meeting. Multimedia journalist Berea Baker has the story. The Child Welfare Special Committee passed Senate Proposed Bill 7018 
During Thursday's special committee meeting, the proposed Senate bill revises the information that the Department of Children and Families is required to inform the court of at a shelter hearing. Leon County resident Barbara Blackwell believes the DCF should exhaust all efforts in helping parents restore their mental health in order to keep the child in the home with their parents. We should uh, offer these parents everything they can to support. Caseworkers from around the state propose that DCF and other family programs should receive more funding in order to repair the home instead of resorting to removing the child. It was in this Senate committee chamber where committee members argued about amendments to the bill that will allow police resource officers to pull a full criminal background history of the parent when they arrive at the home. Vice Committee Chair in District 16, Representative Thad Altman believes proposals and amendments made during the meeting are just the beginning of reshaping the mode of trouble homes. I think we need to provide more funding for substance abuse programs. We need more prevention. It's been proven that our criminal justice system is really not fixing the problem. The continuing trend during Thursday's meeting was how mental health and substance abuse plays a major role in the child's behavior and performance at school. Maria Baker, FAMI TV 20. According to DCS fiscal year totals, there were over 200,000 child investigation cases of abuse and neglect in the state of Florida alone. The Florida legislator is urging Congress to recognize three Haitian holidays. The Florida Senate sent a memorial to Congress encouraging the nation to recognize Haitian Independence Day, Haitian Flag Day, and Haitian Heritage Month as national holidays. The memorial highlights the shared history between the United States and Haiti. The Florida Senate wants January 1 to be National Haitian Independence Day. The state of Florida has already recognized May as Haitian Heritage Month and May 18th as Haitian Flag Day. And so, Shakoria, the, how's the weather looking for today? It was a bit cold this morning. Yes, Taylor, it has been a bit cold and cloudy because we have a few rainy showers coming. I'll have that forecast for you after the break. Stay tuned, you're watching News 20 at 5. Welcome back, I'm Shakoria Burns with your weather forecast. Today we have some cloudy weather. The current temperature is 76 degrees where winds will be blowing east-southeast at 13 miles per hour. Expect for the sun to set at 6.56 p.m. For the five-day forecast, we'll have a 50% chance of rain and scattered thunderstorms on Wednesday. The high will be 82 and the low will be 61. On Thursday and Friday, we'll be back to sunny skies where the high will be 82 and the low will be 59. And that's all for weather today. Now back to you all at the desk. Stay tuned, you're watching News 20 at 5. Welcome back to News 20 at 5. I'm Travis Milton with your sports. Moving on to high school football, the Lincoln High School Trojans lost 49 to 18 to the Trinity Christian Conquerors. The Conquerors took the first seven points of the game, leaving the Trojans to trail behind throughout the rest of the night. The Trojans put up two points just before the half and eight in the third quarter, scoring their final touchdown at the top of the fourth quarter. The Conquerors added the final score on the board with quarterback Billy Cobb throwing a 33-yard pass to Damian McGee to win the game. The Trojans will turn to the field to take on the University High School Titans this Friday. And the Florida A&M Rattlers volleyball team swept Savannah State 3-0. The win improves the Lady Rattlers' Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference record to 6-1 on the season. The win also helps the Lady Rattlers hold tight to second place in the Southern Division of the MEAC, right behind Bethune-Cookman. The Lady Rattlers will be on the road Wednesday against North Florida and return home for their final game November 1st to face off their, with their arch rival, the Bethune-Cookman Wildcats. That's all we have in sports. Back to you at the desk. Tallahassee Memorial Hospital held a five kilometer walk and one mile run Saturday. The hospital says more than 130 people signed up for TMH's Walk for Life. The walk and 5K run doubled as a health fair for the hospital. Participants could have their blood pressure and weight measure and learn about diseases. TMH administrators hope the walk encourages people to maintain a healthy lifestyle. The walk is the fourth health event TMH has held this year. Well, that's going to do it for us tonight. For Shakori and Travis, I'm Bray Baker. And I'm Taylor Bishop. Thanks for watching. And remember to check the News 20 at 5 tab on thefamuant.com for more news updates. Have a great evening.